Hello, we're going to take a look at a few more trigonometric integrals. We have a secant x divided by tan squared x integral here. And as we look at doing these type of integrals, we're going to have to use u substitution. Now, if we let u equal tan x, now I'm kind of talking in a different problem right now to think about how to attack these trig integrals. What's the derivative of tangent x? secant squared x dx. What that tells us is if we're going to let the u be tangent x, I need to have a secant squared left over for my du. Okay, I don't have that in this problem. If I let u equal secant x, because for these integral problems, it's usually a combination of tan x and secant x, so you're left with the choice, should I let u be tangent or should I let it be secant? Well, if I have secant x, the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x dx. So that means if I'm going to let my u be secant x, I better save a secant x tan x somewhere in my integral. Um, and if I let u equal tan x, as we said, I have to save a secant squared x. And as you see in this problem, if I let u equal secant x, I don't have a secant x tan x left over. And if I let u equal tangent x, I don't have a secant squared. Now a third trick you can throw at these problems is to take the identity, the fact that 10 squared x plus 1 equals secant squared, and do a little substitution. Okay, so these are kind of the three methods of attack. Well, it almost looks like I can do that for this integral, so let's see what happens. I have, have secant x then over tangent squared becomes secant squared x minus 1, if I look at my identity and subtract 1. But then you notice this doesn't really help me, because it's not like I can split up this fraction. Okay, I can only do that if there's one thing in the denominator. So this just kind of hit a dead end with that. Okay, well perhaps you're being nifty and tricky and remember some good pre-calculus and think, what if I switch everything to sines and cosines? And so you let secant x be 1 over cosine x. And what about tangent squared? Well, recognize that this is the same as secant x times 1 over tan squared. And what is tangent squared? Well, sorry, what is 1 over tangent squared? That's just cotangent squared, okay? Because the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So therefore, we have cotangent squared, and cotangent is cosine over sine squared. Look what happens. We have one of these cosines gets reduced, leaving me one cosine x up top, and a sine squared x down low. Okay, so it almost looks like we're in the same spot here as we started out because it's a trig divided by a trig squared. But what is nice is I now have sine and cosine, and those are great partners because I can just say, let's let u equal sine x, then du is straight up cosine x dx. So I can make that substitution then, and it gives me du divided by u squared. Hey, sweet. So that's just the integral of u to the negative 2 du. Integral of that is, if I add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number, plus c, which is then negative 1 divided by u, plus c, and u is just sine x. So it's negative 1 divided by sine x, plus c. And there's my final answer. Okay, we're going to try another integral involving secant and tangent. Now the other one, we exhausted all our options of letting u equal secant or u equal tangent until we had to arrive at the fact that we had to switch to sine and cosine. This one's a little bit easier. I see that I have powers of secant and one tangent over here. So I can peel off, I like to use that word for this idea, peel off one of those secants, so secant cubed becomes secant squared times secant, times tangent x dx, and you should immediately see that that is the derivative of secant x. 
So I'm going to let u equal secant x. Therefore, du is secant x tan x dx. And I can make a great substitution here of u squared du. This became my du, all of that. And then this was the u. All right, so that's just a power rule. So u third divided by 3 plus c equals secant cubed x divided by 3 plus c after I plug in my u. And that one is quick as that. Okay, recognizing that I could peel off a secant x and substitute in uh, u for secant x. Let's try one more. Okay, I'm putting this one in there to tell you about another way you can attack trigonometric integrals. And this is just remembering there's all those trig formulas out there. You can take and manipulate trig functions in so many ways uh, to make them work for you. Like we have saw in previous video that cosine squared x is equal to 1 plus cosine 2x divided by 2. And we use that to our advantage. Well, this time we're using those product to sum formulas um, that are just excellent and they really help with integrals. So the formula is in general sine u times cosine v is equal to one half times sine u minus v plus sine u plus v and close that parenthesis. So that changes my product into a sum. Um, and this helps with integration a lot because I can just take the integral of this and the integral of this. And I know what the integral of sine is. It's just cosine, negative cosine. So that's easy. And just so you know, there's other formulas out there. If, for example, you have sine u times sine v, that's going to equal something. I could have cosine u times cosine v, and that will equal something. So for those formulas, you can look those up if you need to, but just know they exist. So then when you are confronted with a problem like we have right over here, you can be like, hmm, I have this product of two trigonometric functions. What can I do? Well, I can change it to a sum by doing my formula. So this equals the integral of one half times Okay, so u is 5x, v is 4x. So first of all, it's sine, and I subtract those angles. So I have 5 minus 4 gives me 1x, plus sine of this time. I add the angles, so 5 plus 4 gives me 9x dx. Okay, so this is giving me 1 half times the integral of sine x plus the integral of sine 9x. So I split my integral up. The one half is multiplying everything. Now I split it up because in this one right here, I have to do u substitution. I have to let u equal 9x and du would then be 9dx. An easy u substitution, but very, very important because I now have one half times the integral of sine x dx plus the integral plus one ninth the integral of sine u du with my u substitution. Okay, so that one ninth came from the nine over here and the u substitution. So that's really important that you remember that one ninth out there. I now have one half times everything. Let's see, integral of sine x is negative cosine x plus one ninth cosine u and u is 9x, so I can do that. And we got a nice little plus c. And now I think I'll just finish it out by distributing my 1 half. So 1 half times 1 ninth is 1 18th plus c. And there is the final answer. Oh, let me just, instead of cosine x, cosine 9x. There we go. There's the final answer. Okay, last one. That last example is there just to show you that remember all those pre-calculus trig formulas you learned. There's a lot out there. You can almost always manipulate a trigonometric integral trigonometric expression into some other form that will be more useful to you.